I want to give a little bit of an overview here. Hopefully uh, you were able to find some fairly clear ways to group the terrestrial planets and the Jovian or giant planets together. And perhaps you did find some exceptions to your rules. And, you know, um, I hope this experience kind of gives you a feel of what it's like to be an astronomer and be looking at this data and have to come up with these categories, right? Because it's not obvious necessarily at first glance. And depending on the uh, items that you found most important, you might have come up with, you know, different groupings. So generally the terrestrial and Jovian planets are grouped together so that the terrestrial planets here have small radii. They are relatively near the sun. They tend to have very few number of moons and they do not have any rings. Uh, the Jovian planets by contrast have large radii. They're far from the sun. They have many moons and they have many rings. And so now um, I wanna ask you a couple of questions about some characteristics and whether they would fall more into the terrestrial planet category, the Jovian planet category, whether they could be considered an attribute that both categories share or whether they don't fit into any at all. So this first question is, if the characteristic for my planet was that it has no solid surfaces, where would this best be placed? All right, a few more seconds on this question. All right, I'm seeing a lot of um, B that no solid surfaces would be characterized more in the Jovian or giant planet category. Yep, so they're kind of a, you know, a, a liquefied and compressed gas, but there's no clear surface. Um, you may be thinking, well, what about the solid cores? We know that some, the Jovian planets have solid cores. And I guess I would argue that's simply just not a surface, right? So you'd have to go down pretty deep um, in order to find uh, any sort of solid object. And it's more of a, a transition of pressure from lower to higher pressure. And not as if you just, you know, can someday land, you know, dive beneath the atmosphere and land on the core. It's not really how... The, the nature of that solid core. Um, what if we consider nearly coplanar orbits? Which category would that best belong in? Nearly coplanar orbits would best be placed between, you know, in the region of overlap in the Venn diagram because it's shared by both terrestrial and Jovian planets. So all of the planets are in nearly coplanar orbits. Therefore, this is a property that both categories share. Um, okay, uh, one last one. What if um, I, found an object, another object in the solar system, and I said it's very similar to Pluto. Um, what would be the best place to categorize this object? So yeah, the orbital characteristic, uh, if we, we consider that the orbital, all planets are in the same orbital plane, then Pluto is definitely not in that same orbital plane. So that's one reason we would think maybe it doesn't belong in either category. Um, it might be easy to say that it's not a Jovian planet, right? Because it's not large, but is it a terrestrial planet? Um, well, it seems to share many of the um, necessary criteria. It's not near the sun, but maybe that's just an exception to the rule and we should consider it a terrestrial planet. So Pluto and the other uh, dwarf planets, they're all small, they're all solid surfaces, and um, they mostly orbit in these more inclined orbital, uh, outside the orbital plane, but there's other characteristics that sort of define a planet. And that it, it kind of has to do with the solar system formation model. But one of those is that it sort of cleared the area around it of any debris. So for example, in Earth's orbit, any bits of bits and pieces from early in the solar system's formation would have been swept up by the Earth as the Earth went around its orbit and they all would have basically fallen into the planet. And this is the category that most of the dwarf planets fail. Uh, the reason that Pluto was declassified had to do with the discovery of Eris, 
which is a dwarf planet that we didn't know of until I can't remember when this happened, the early 2000s, mid 2000s. Um, and Eris is bigger than Pluto. So it seems like either we would have had to bring Eris into the planet category or push Pluto out. And because of tilted orbits, uh, many astronomers decided it was more appropriate to kick Pluto out of the planet category. Okay, so in general, these are our, um, you know, orbital or the characteristics of terrestrial and Jovian planets. Uh, you know all these, but here they are for future reference. And, um, you know, maybe we can use other data as well to categorize planets into different categories. And this is something that people are doing right now because we're discovering exoplanets, new exoplanets all the time. And when an astronomer discovers a new exoplanet, one of the things they want to know is, is it similar to Earth? Is it similar to Jupiter? Is it somewhere, you know, similar to Neptune? Uh, you know, what planets does it remind us of? And can we use that to kind of get a feeling for what this other star system is like? So just considering the numbers in these tables, um, these are all relative to the mass of Earth. That's what that little plus sign thing means. So this is relative to the mass of Earth and the radius of Earth. What would you say that this planet reminds you most of? So it's a fairly high density object. Therefore, it would seem like probably not a Jovian planet. And then we could consider, well, then is it a terrestrial planet or maybe this is a dwarf planet? And looking at the, the size of this planet, um, it's about the same size as Earth, about the same mass as Earth. So I would say this seems like a fairly Earth-like planet. In addition, it's, you know, Earth orbits at 1 AU, this planet's at 1.4 AU. It's well within the Earth range and maybe this would even be in the habitable zone of its star, depending on other characteristics of its star. So this is exactly what astronomers are doing when they detect exoplanets, trying to figure out all of these numbers so that they can kind of figure out what it's like to be on worlds.